Well, hello. Good morning. Welcome to the Raise Up Podcast. That's Athena. And that's Charlie. Amen. Hey, how's it going, guys? So Athena has some great topics today. I can't wait. Wait till you hear about these. <laughs> so so we show up. Get some caffeine up. out. <laughs> yeah, we show up and he's like, man, you're so serious. And, you know, this is one of the, the great dimensions of our partnership mm-hmm. is that I'm like really thinking about all of this stuff in an intentional way. And he's like, I want to inject some fun into it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So you know, know what she tells me all the time? We have to have more fun in our life. Yes, we have to have more yes, fun. So, yes. And so, so we get here, then we get all serious in it. You know, there's always serious stuff that's going on with us and our company and stuff, but we kind of like to mix it up a little bit too and just, you know, just kind of like make it lighter, but it definitely educational, definitely something helpful. So anyways, if you see the, the combination going back and forth, that's what we're trying to do. Yes. And, you know, it just reminded me of something that happened this morning. I was texting, I'm in like these text groups with these other women, and it reminded me that when we have a surprise that happens, that is what invokes like that laughter piece. So when you, like most of the time, I don't know how you manage to do it, but you will surprise me with something that you'll say, and it'll just be so funny to me, and you're like, what? (laughs) And... I think part of it is because I'm in train brain and I'm thinking about like 10 more steps ahead of wherever I was at. And so it takes me back to presence. But you know what I found, you know, I thought about this this morning. What I think is interesting is that also the things that surprise us make us upset. And it's it's, twofold. (laughs) But isn't that fascinating that, that the same formula that provokes a laugh is also the same formula that can like upset you because it was an unintended outcome that you don't like or that you think you don't like until you go through it. So Well, I, I just think in the way it's delivered and what it's about and what the content is. I mean, that's, <clears throat> I don't know if it's the same exact delivery tool, but if somebody's telling you something very negative, it's, it's tough to be positive about it, but if somebody's saying something positive or funny or a, uh, a jest after it, a, a joke after it, like you say something kind of crazy and they're like, what the hell did you just say? You know, I mean, that's like sometimes the woo factor. So anyways, so anyways, on the, on the, on the more serious side, Athena has some subjects that she wants to talk about. Well, I think that that's a great subject because, woo woo. <laughs> well, not, not just woo hoo, but it's like, um, when, when we are, when we are outside of the present moment, it, it's, it can be a challenge to receive something that is like unexpected. And we have the choice to decide how we're going to react to that. Just like we have the choice when the surprise comes, are we going to file that in? This is a negative thing that I don't want to deal with. Or am I going to laugh about it and go, yeah, like, let me see what I can do with this. Like, there's been times where I started laughing and you're like, why are you laughing? But I think that that's why. What about the crazy model coming out? (laughs) (laughs) I think that's why it's because I've figured out that there's, that everything doesn't have to be so serious. And that's been one of the gifts that you've shown me over time is how to, to unravel that. Well, I mean, I think life is serious enough as it is. I mean, then you have to have some balance into it. And I just uh, sometimes just think that if we can just lighten the load a little bit, it makes it easier on the whole thing. So I think you'll do that to me. And I think I'll do that to you as as we're talking to somebody and we're like, what the F? And you're like, okay, hold on, settle down. Let's let's, let's, (laughs) let's bring this back to reality. You can see everybody's hair starting to go on the back of their neck, you know, so. And we'll be both be the same way. So that's why it's a counterbalance. And I tell you that, again, after going some of the Danny stuff that we've been going to, it's just like you kind to see things in a different light now and it doesn't have to be so crazy and serious just as we were talking to one of our mechanics yesterday it's like would you talk to these drivers about not wrecking stuff and i'm like that, sure that, that that song has been played a hundred times you know we just that's just a repeat you know that's just it's it's on a repeat all the time but on the other hand when you have 120 pieces of iron moving around um the likelihood of something happening is going to happen i mean it's just as we've gone over 24 years coming up in our 25th year we just figure out these things happen so I can yell and scream like I would in the olden days and what the hell are you doing and put them in a, a crummy van, but sometimes it's just out of their control or whatever else happens or it's in their control and we just kind of redirect. So I, I always think that there's a way that you can redirect some of this energy. And I have to be redirected all the time because like, you know, get on my bad side and you get on my own bad, went, bad bandwidth and it won't go well. But 
I just look at it and say, is that really what they mean or what's going on with this? Or can I just re rewrite the story? So, you know, it's when it makes such a difference when you're coming from that perspective as opposed to it's like you have this open piece to receive information and when you're coming from that other direction you're completely closed it's like it's my way or the highway sure and i think all of us as business owners and really looking at what it is is like you know we didn't have a lot of mentors we didn't have a lot of people to walk us through that journey and now that we have other people that are walking with us and seeing how they react and what they do and how things are it's it's so much more clear to see and it's you know, some of it's educational piece, but some of it's the right teacher. You have to have the right person. I mean, as you and I have done counseling and done everything and talked to everybody in the world, you have to have that right person that hits those receptors that you can understand. It's like uh, speaking another foreign language. Like you don't understand it unless you understand it. And uh, I think that we understand each other a lot better now. And uh, I think that's just resonated with our employees. It's resonated with our family, our kids, everybody else is like, we're solid in here. And we the decisions we make are making solid decisions. We're not just going off the cuff. And don't get me wrong, we've done a lot of off the cuff stuff before too. And you know, and the, off the cuff sometimes is some of the best things you've done too, because like it's just like spontaneous, it makes sure it makes it happen and deals happen. So, you know, there's just a well-rounded balance of this sphere that's out there that we're always just trying to make sure it's a perfect sphere, but you know, if something kind of hangs up, we know it's gonna repolish itself out. It always does. Yeah, you know, and I think that also, you know, I was teaching a, I was speaking about leadership at um, a nonprofit that I volunteer with last night to a group of leaders, and they asked me, like, what, what is more rewarding? Is it just leading, or is it like leading in a group? And, and, and I wanted to get a little clarification because you and I have been in some form of leadership together, like, for many, many years. And I have to say that when you make the decision to partner and you, you are deciding that you're with that partner and this is where you're headed, the richness that comes from learning is, I can't imagine that it is, it is any, it, this is such a deep way to learn because no matter what happens, you're stuck you have to have the feedback loop. Like it's coming, whether sure. you want it or not. And you mean from your partner? Yeah. 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 And yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100%. It's, like it just goes off like diarrhea. <laughs> it was like, holy shit, you know, what the hell happened here? <laughs> but I mean, on a serious note with that, is it's like you want to be, come that person who is learning and understanding and connecting mm -hmm. and um and without that element i i don't i know i wouldn't be where i was at today without that teaching and understanding and those exercises that we did over and over again for so many years yeah i mean you know it, it's hard enough to figure it out by yourself and then when you have two people you're kind of splitting a, a somewhat of a load you know and so it's kind of good that we both have theirs like we're doing these new construction projects and we're doing all this other stuff and i'm really enjoying seeing the different establishments and where we're going and checking with the contractors. And I never thought that would be a thing. So, you know, so in you, it doesn't really matter as much to you because you're buying all this stuff in the background. So you know how things are going to go, but kind of like, it's been this whole kind of journey of new things going on for us. And we've had quite a few construction projects. We've had a kind of remodels selling our first, uh, our first condo. I mean, we've been in a buying mode for so long that, you know, we've sold our first place and it's a lot easier to buy than it is to sell because I think sometimes it's a uh, more interesting because of what your roles are but again that full circle it's like you have to know what it looks like on both sides of it to be able to buy and sell properties and and the same with the business like you know uh, there's a lot of team members that we trust here and that we do and that we let them have a lot of the reins on it and then when we see things kind of going there we kind of ask them a question why did you make that decision you know why did you do it that way because i want to be on their the mind frame that they are of like why they made that decision and how come they how they came to that so i can kind of help them guide through and just saying hey i don't think it's a wrong decision or a bad decision it's just here's what i would have kind of done on this part so but the final outcome, if it's a good outcome at the end of it, that's great. If we can make it better, always, you know, that's what kind of how we are. And so I guess getting back to you and our conversation is like, we kind of conversate most of everything that we're going to be doing differently on a larger level, like on the small level, you know, like I didn't even know the lamps showed up today. So we got the lamps, you know, so it's just all these different things are coming up as we're doing things 
getting ourselves ready for the next step. And if I'm not doing it, you're doing it. And if you need food, I go get your food. If you need something for me, I go get it. And so it's just like, it's a well-oiled machine now. Yeah, and you know, I made a point when they were setting us up for this episode is um, they were like, hey, did, or they'd asked about something. And, and I just mentioned if Charlie and I go, it's not possible for Charlie and I to share with each other all the smaller decisions that are made, no. but they just happen. And, um, but you're right, on, on the bigger pieces that we, we are very much aligned. And I remember that didn't always used to be the case. Oh, no. And, and really, you know, it kind of it brings of me back to that conversation that we had a few weeks ago where you were like, when I would ask you the question, I literally was coming from a place of curiosity, like you just mentioned, coming from that place of curiosity with your team to understand. And you thought I was messing with you. When well, I would ask you, can you explain that to me in a different way? I thought you were fucking with me. <laughs> <laughs> because you're like, always like, and then I, I explained it the most simple way. And she's like, can you re-explain that to me in a different way that I would understand? I'm like, are you kidding me? Aren't you like, you didn't understand this it's plain English? It's more like, you're, I'm speaking yeah, English. Like, yeah, you know? but you know, it's, it's like, sometimes you don't understand. And I've used that on you before, but I think I used it because you used it on me. So I was But gonna, I would explain it in a different way. You, yeah, you would. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not in a way I understood again either, but it's... It's the language. Language is everything. So you have to understand your partner and your business partner or your partner that's your partner in life or your wife or your husband or whatever else is. We all don't understand it. We're helping another couple out, each other. We're helping some friends of ours in our inner circle group. And, you know, they're, they've are they been struggling for some different things. And we've been talking to them and walking through it. And it's so much easier for them to hear it from us because it comes from a safer place. And I think sometimes we got caught in that because I would use Bill or Kimberly or somebody else like that it would be my talk through because we don't understand sometimes each other like we didn't understand what each other's intentions were what was going on and I, I don't know if it wasn't a trust factor it's just i think it's just an understanding of what we think was important and then what the other person was thinking important and we've had that struggle sometimes like you know this is i need you right now and you're like okay and then i'll call you and you'll call me and i need you right now i'm like well i'm in the middle of something so it's 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 a, it's a tug of war that's what i'm saying it's a seesaw you're always trying to figure out what that balance weight is i think that part of it was um, part of our struggle earlier on was there was this like fear underneath it that if I go all in, like I, I thought I knew what an all in mindset was when I was younger, but I understand it to be different now. It's kind of like when you decide that you're going to get married, you really don't have any idea what you're committing to if, if it's your 20 something and you're pledging your, your life. And now I understand better what all in means and it means to me. It's like there's layers to all in. Just like there's layers to commitment. There's, um, are you like level one commitment? Are you level five commitment? Like, um, and so it's, it's like figuring that out for yourself on your journey. Well, I, and I definitely think that all in is going to mean something different a year from now. I mean, <clears throat> as we grow in our journeys, what things are, and as we understand things more and things come to enlightenment, <clears throat> I think we change with it too. So I, I, I think it's a constant change. Like there's been so many changes in the last six or eight months that I can only imagine what another six or nine months is going to do and what opportunities are going to come our way. So we're always open toward these receptors are going out there and we're kind of seeing what the world is open. And as we are more open, more things come to us. I mean, it's like, it's more clear to us. Yeah, so. the mental clarity is definitely there, but also we're in a position to receive. And when you're coming from a place of defense where you're defending yourself or you're defending your position or you're defending um, your business against whatever, it, it, it closes you off to receiving. It, it really does. And you're not able to receive the feedback loop. You're not able to receive, like, we have... We know people that they, you can't help them with anything because they're just not open to receiving. Oh, I, I think, think we both were in that shoes too. Mm -hmm. So it, again, the other part of that is if you're not open to receiving, you're probably not open to giving either because if you can't receive, you really can't give. So it, it's a twofold. So it's like... You can tell everybody it, and if you're just waiting for the other person to shut up so you can say something to them, then you're not receiving it. You're <laughs> like, 
are you done? I mean, that would be like my thing because there would be this pause. And she's like, no, I'm not done. I'm like, all right, well, okay, then just continue on. But I was just waiting to be the rebuttal. I wasn't, I wasn't receiving in that part. And that would be employees or that would be Athena, my wife, or kids or things like this because you already have the answer in your head. But is that truly receiving? No. And then when I'm really giving out, did I hear them and what their really wants were? Or am I just already made up my mind? You know, I mean, I don't want to be the judge and jury. I want to be the person that looks back and listens to the whole thing and makes a positive decision. So, and, and it doesn't happen that every way, but I can tell you that it's in the 90 percentile. Like I, I listen to things. So we have our manager's meetings. Like we had a, a client that, you know, definitely um, got billed for something he probably shouldn't have got billed for. And they're like, well, you know, we took care of it and stuff like this. I'm like, yeah, but our client is our client and we didn't serve our client in the correct way. So just letting our team know, hey, we want to do the right thing. And it wasn't because they were trying to do the wrong thing. They just understood that if the person said at the trip and they did it and they canceled it and somebody else said, no, it's not canceled, we should have called the client back. And so I take that instance because the right thing was to do is not charge a client and apologize and let them know, hey, how can we communicate this better? But if you'd have hit me 10 years ago, I would have looked at that $400 and say, well, that's our money, you know, because that was the closed mindedness I had is like, we need to collect everything that's coming in now instead of looking at the long term relationship that we have and they've passed more work onto us and done more stuff. We should really look at the full picture of it. So it's much easier to see those things now. So yeah, I was really glad that you spoke up because you were absolutely right in that moment. <laughs> you guys got this on tape? I was Holy waiting shit. for that. Because, you know, a broken watch is right twice a day. So it's 12 and 12. So if it's broke at that time. But no, I mean, in knowing this, I mean, just knowing it and be able to show it to our team. That's the whole thing. Is Now they understand where the mindset we're into. And, you know, it changes all the time. And, and as you guys as employers out there and, and business owners and things like this, they're 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 following behind you. I mean, they're your troops are your troops, you know, and they're your good ones are going to follow behind you, but you know, let them question you, let them ask you some questions once in a while, let them, you know, kind of challenge what's going on once in a while. It can't be everything, but if they see something that just doesn't seem right, let them ask you about what those questions are and really be present when you're answering. Yeah. Because you know what? It's important for them to understand. Sometimes, you know, when we did some surveys, like money wasn't the top thing that was in there. They really wanted to be heard. They wanted to talk about what's going on. And we see more and more of that. And we see people are like, Hey, I don't understand why you're not doing this. And I was like, listen, if you guys knew the backstory of really how much time we put into this, we don't make you privilege. So all this stuff, but there is counseling, there's coaching, there's things that we talk about. We talk about the safety aspects of opening doors and windy days. I mean, there is a lot that we talk about. A lot of other people don't understand what we're doing, but there's a lot of intentionality in what we what we say and what we do to our employees and, and to our friends too. I mean, advice that we do. I mean, that's important. We get called for everything for for where somebody can get their transmission to do it. To where is a good masseuse? Where is a you know where where do I go to a good place to stay in Hawaii. I mean, there's just always, cause we're always traveling, doing things and people think we have all these great answers. And most of the time we have some pretty good ones and we're willing to share that with people. So. I would agree. We're willing, you know, we should probably get one of the topics at least done, huh? We're, we're hitting it. Okay. Well, See, I, guess I, I, I sneak that in on you. Absolutely. Yeah, just... You know, um, I feel like, that is like, I, I initially had brought up the topic of like showing up and just how you show up. And he just eloquently like went there even without me making it too serious. Well, in, listen guys, there's always a time to be serious in this thing, but you know, the, the object for this is for you guys to enjoy the podcast, look at, get your nuggets out of it. And then, you know, share it with some friends or share it with somebody else that they can do because the whole object of this is spending, you know, a couple hours a week doing this is, is really to tell our story and what's going on and how can this story help other people. And I can tell you how many people have seen it and they just really talked about it. And then we've had some more serious podcasts and we've had some more funny ones and we've had some like, you know, personal things have hit us and, and it's, uh, it's just who we are. So it's so funny. I was in the, um, we went to, uh, the lollipop, excuse me, the, uh, champagne pops, uh, gala this weekend. Thank you, Lori Finani and Matt invite us to it. And, uh, we had a great time. Like it's the first time we've really gone to a black tie affair in probably three or four years since COVID yeah, happened. COVID, and really? Yeah. So it was fun to see everybody out. It was enjoyable. It was a long day. It started like at you know, two 30 in the afternoon, us leaving our big lake house and yes, it did start. Didn't get home until like 1231. So it was a very long night, but we had an enjoyable night. It was really fun. We had great, an airline divert in the middle people. of it. Great people. But 
you know, going back to that, it's just like talking about our podcast uh, and the thing. And some people are interested. Matt's like, I saw your one just the other day. You know, I saw a little clip on it and it's just interesting. So as it gets out to more people, more people are interested because it's just like you're telling a story of something. And so many people say like, oh, you know, what's BAC stand for? And what's it gone? And what was the history of it? And it's like, you know, coming up on 25 years now. There's some history involved. Yeah, there's a lot of history involved. And you know, one of the things that we always talked about doing, and I'm not sure if we'll, I'm sure we'll get it done sometime within this company, is like there when we went and visited, uh, when we were in the uh, Spinning Wheels group, uh, we went and visited um, Chick Fil A's headquarters. And one of the coolest thing really was it, it showed a history on their wall as you're going down the, uh, <clears throat> they were going down the area where they do all the testing facilities where they're going to put foods and all that other stuff. And you walk down the wall, it started from day one and it was like a, a journey as you walk through it. And I remember just walking through it, seeing all the different things and timelines and pictures of what happened. Yeah. And how cool is that to kind of show your story? So I guess where I'm coming back to this is like, we don't have that. We don't have near the facility that Chick-fil-A did, but we're telling our story here. This is like our live platform, you know, and that was, that was probably seven, eight years ago when we went to that place. And I'm sure that you see more people doing podcasts now that says they're telling their stories. So that's the kind of cool part about this. We can do whatever we want in our story. Yeah. And you know, what I love about this is that, uh, we're not just reaching the people that don't know us or that happen to stumble on leadership podcasts or entrepreneurial podcasts. We're also, we're, we're reaching our team members. And in our next episode, we're going to be bringing on one of our team members that uh, is going to inform the team of some interesting things. So it's not just, it's not just the entrepreneur aspect. It's like we're playing some of this out in real time. You know, an example of communicating and just being present, our children work for us. Yes. And we have, um, like, I had an opportunity today, and when they're here at the office, they tend to just, like, crash the door, no matter what, if I'm in a Zoom meeting or I'm meeting with somebody, it could be serious. And it occurred to me today that I didn't properly communicate to the younger person, Charlie, little Charlie, he's 15, like, what's he just happening? got his permit yesterday, too. So if you're on the road, watch out. If you're in Anchorage on yeah. the road. <laughs> or Wasilla. Between, <laughs> between Big Anchorage Lake. and Big Lake. Um, but, but anyway, I, it occurred to me that I have never communicated to him. Like, he, he has a family schedule that he sees, but the rest of us all know about our calendars. And I sat him down, and I just looked at him, and, and I said, you know what? It, I realized that you, I, I didn't share with you what our day, what your dad and my day looks like. And so when you come to like ask me a question, you always are in a position of interrupting us. And I don't ever want you to feel like you're not important. But I also want to do justice to the time that the other people that we've scheduled time with uh, and that I'm being, I'm respecting their time also. And so what I need to do is give you this piece of information so that you know unless it's important or urgent, really urgent, that there's these gaps in the day where you know I'm not in a meeting or you know I'm not on a phone call or, or something like that. And it was like a light bulb went off for that kid. And I'm like, so then we're not feeling like, uh, and we're not feeling like you're, you're bugging me. He's like, mom, I don't want to bug you. I'm like, you're never a bug. But I think, you know, what's fascinating to me is that I have never had that conversation with him like that. But I've had that conversation so many times with our employees where um, I remember one young woman in particular that I worked right next to her. This was many years ago. And every time she had an idea in her head, she was excited and she'd come and interrupt my interrupt whatever I was doing. And then finally, like two days of this happened because we just I just shifted over by her office and I sat her down and I said, look, I really love your enthusiasm but I'm never going to get any work done if you crash my door jam every 15 minutes with a, this idea. And so what I need to do is schedule a weekly, like let's do a touch base meeting. And if it's somebody that really collaborates with you a lot, then do a, a daily stand up or something. But that's how my momentum meetings every week were born was because of this one young lady who had all this enthusiasm and, and energy and she just couldn't wait to get it out. And so she'd, She'd hit my door jam with the idea. And, and so then we agreed that we would meet once a week for, um, for like that hour. And she'd just keep notes on everything that came up in her mind. 
and that later moved into this season of now I have these 90 minute meetings with with the uh, individuals who report to me and it's a it's got an interesting little um, agenda to it but it's it's a way for me to ha they know when their scheduled time is they don't have to crash us and uh, they they can count on that to happen every single week and it's it's I have five questions and uh, if you're interested in knowing what those five questions are that I ask in those meetings definitely like ask in the comments and I'll, and I'll be happy to send them over to you but um, yeah it's when we're open to when we're open to being in that receptive mode we're not coming from a place of defense and you can see the people that you feel the energy that they're able to receive because you want to move towards them and then the people that you that you don't feel that energy you you tend to move away from you like go somewhere else you get far away you know what i mean sure for sure there's a lot. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I was going on a tangent. She was on a, she's on a roll. Well, anyways, guys, this is our time on this one that we have, and we just wanted to get with you guys and let you guys know, and definitely look us up on... RaiseUpMindset.com. That's it. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next one. Bye. Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at RaiseUpMindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you wanna dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast. Click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again, bye-bye.